I think ultimately what I was trying to accomplish here was to be able to combine multiple themes that I thought different people would try and basically just flip them on their head. I'm Dylan DeJesus and this is the breakdown of our Christmas theme Van Skate Highs. So with the massive success of our first contest, we knew right away we had to dive into our second one. So with the announcement of our Christmas contest, I knew I had to do a really cool Christmas theme again also. So I wanna have as much real estate as possible to do any artwork on these. So what I'm gonna do is remove the van stripe on the outside of both shoes. This is also really important when I know I'm gonna be doing any character work because it's really tough to do that stuff stretching across different panels. In this case, it'd be going over the van stripe. So here, when I can remove it, I think I'm just gonna end up with a little bit more of a cleaner result. There was essentially three main elements that I wanted to incorporate within the design. I really wanted to utilize the Kobe 6 Grinch colorway. I love the Nike SB Ugly Sweater series. And then I wanted to go with the classic candy cane pattern. Now that we're ready to get into the painting and I know I'm gonna be doing the Grinch colorway from the Kobe 6s, I'm actually gonna lay down a base coat of white first. This really helps when you're working on softer materials like mesh or canvas in this case. If you lay down that white, you're gonna get any of your future colors to pop a little bit more. Now for the tongues, I want a little bit of a metallic feel to this blue that I'm gonna be laying down. So what I do is mix in about 50% of some Angelus Silver directly into my blue mixture. And what this does is just give it a little bit of a metallic sheen without dramatically impacting the color. It doesn't lighten it a ton or anything like that. It just gives it this really cool metallic look. Now on our eyelids panel where I'm gonna be doing the candy cane pattern, since I know there's probably a good chance I'm gonna to have to at least be doing a little bit of touch up between all of the stripes. I don't want to keep these as that white canvas. I'm going to lay down just a little bit of an off-white color. You could call it an eggshell or something like that, just so that it's easier to go back and touch up this color rather than trying to match that factory white look. For the stripes, I'm just gonna lay down some FDC 3700 cut glitter vinyl. This works really well on soft materials like canvas. And then I'm just gonna be removing all of the, every other stripe, in which case I want those to turn red once I go ahead and airbrush these. After I've airbrushed them red, I'm just gonna hit them with a quick hand-painted coat of some of the Angelus glitter lights. Now, once we go ahead and remove our vinyl, as long as we heat setted that vinyl and laid these down correctly, there shouldn't be too many touch-ups but we can go ahead back, grab our kind of eggshell color and touch up any areas where some red might have gotten onto. For our ugly sweater pattern on the toe, what I did was just lay down a few different stencils of each of the main characters. And then that's just to get the base color of them down. And then I'm gonna go back individually and hand paint all of the tiny little additional details on them. I think when you're trying to replicate a pattern, whether it be the ugly sweater theme on the tongue or these candy cane stripes, there's a very fine line as an artist that you're walking to where people are either going to be able to tell that these are flat out painted or you're gonna be so incredibly precise that they were gonna look like they were done by a machine. Anytime you're working with these vulcanized soles, they're really easy to clean up. Once the paint is really dry, you can kind of basically just go ahead and scrape everything off with a toothpick that you might've gotten onto the midsole. And then you can just take a Q-tip and some acetone and get off any additional excess. For our Grinch character, I'm gonna go ahead and lay down some of that FDC 3700 vinyl again. And then we're just gonna go ahead and airbrush some of the main colors for the silhouette. And then I'm gonna do all of my detail in the outline with our toothpick. What I'm really loving about hosting these contests is that what I think you're seeing amongst all the artists is they're willing to step outside of their norm. They're willing to try something new that they haven't done before. And that's what you need to do to create something that's really unique and gonna stand out. If there's ever really a time to just go completely over the top, I think it's when you're gonna be doing a Christmas shoe. Now for some of the details to really get these to pop, what I wanted to add was a Grinch fur near the sock liner. So we went ahead and purchased a lime green feather boa and we just kind of cut it up to size to wrap around the top collar of these. And the last little detail that to me was kind of the most important thing from the start was somehow incorporating lights into this shoe. Usually I wouldn't really be about adding some of these over the top details like this Grinch fur or the LED lights, but for a Christmas display piece, these are things that are really gonna captivate the whole theme. 
And right away, one of the first thing that comes to my mind is how do you do this, but not overdo it? How do you make it subtle enough that it's still kind of cool, but not the most obnoxious thing in the world? In this case, I really wanted to look at the shoe as a 3D object, not just a flat 2D version of a mock-up or something like that. And how do we incorporate lights into the design, potentially with the character? So there's some imagery of the Grinch stealing lights off of a house uh, in a Christmas scene. So I thought it would be pretty cool to make it seem like the Grinch character was actually stealing lights from the shoe. That sweet spot is trying to do everything with paint, but in this case, we went way outside of the norm added the fur, added these tiny little LED lights, and hopefully we really created a piece that people will remember and be talking about years from now, anytime you think of Christmas themed shoes.